Oftentimes I try to feature in my videos the best stocks you could invest in to earn passive, reliable and growing income. In my last video, I shared three must-have stocks that look really appealing to me and that every investor should consider seriously. Today, I'll do different. I would like to draw your attention to some stocks I consider very dangerous to invest in. By dangerous I mean not only they can reduce their dividend but more importantly you could end up losing your initial investment too. So thumbs up for the video please to share your support and let's get into it. The first stock I would like to warn about is Cherry Hill Mortgage Investment. Cherry Hill Mortgage Investment Corporation is a real estate finance company that specializes in investing in residential mortgage assets. It's publicly traded under the ticker symbol CHMI on the New York Stock Exchange. Cherry Hill primarily invests in residential mortgage-backed securities RMBS, which are securities backed by pools of residential mortgages. These investments can include both agency RMBS, which are guaranteed by government-sponsored enterprises like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or Ginnie Mae. The stock yield more than 17% per year. I understand this is a very alluring number that can make a lot of investors dizzy. But please beware that this yield is not sustainable at all. You see that through the dividend growth rate of minus 18% per year for the last five years. The company keeps reducing its dividend over and over and it will continue doing so. To assess the company's ability to pay the dividends to its shareholders, we have to look at the return on equity ratio. Rho is typically calculated by dividing a REIT's net income by its shareholders' equity. This metric provides insight into how effectively the REIT is generating profits relative to the equity invested by shareholders. REITs often aim to provide attractive returns to shareholders through dividends, so Rho is an important metric for investors to evaluate. For the case of Cherry Hill, this rate keeps bouncing up and down through the years. It was a negative 14% for the last year. The problem with Cherry Hill is not merely the dividend sustainability. The stock price keeps falling further and further from 2019. If you invested $1,000 back then you would now have a little less than $150. How much dividends you need to even that out? The answer is not enough dividends from Cherry Hill to compensate this falling share price. I would not invest a single penny in this stock. The second stock I would never invest in is Orchid Island. Similar to Cherry Hill Mortgage Investment Corporation, Orchid Island Capital invests in both agency RMBS and non-agency RMBS. Agency RMBS are backed by government-sponsored enterprises like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or Ginnie Mae, while non-agency RMBS lack such guarantees and may involve higher credit risk. Orchid Island Capital is supposed to generate income for its shareholders through dividends and capital appreciation but in reality this is a complete different story. Like Cherry Hill. The numbers are horrible. Okay the dividend yield is high at 17% but look at the rest. Dividend safety, 13. Dividend growth, minus 20% per year in the last 5 years. Dividend growth streak, 0 years. What is dangerous for investors is that they pay monthly dividends so a lot of people are urged to invest in this company to reap up the payments at a regular basis. People who only see this monthly payment and see the very high dividend yield make a mistake but not researching further. As good companies have similar metrics, bad companies have similar metrics too. The return on equity of Orchid Island is just awful. This is enough to trigger the alarm not to put a single cent in the stock. Now have a look at the stock price. It has fallen from $50 in 2017 to $9 in 2024. The share price was divided by 5 in 7 years. Do I think the stock price will fall further? It will likely do so. Do I have trust in this company to get out of the rut? Absolutely not and why would I? The top management of the company itself don't have trust in the company. The insiders own a very small 2% of the total share of this company. I haven't noticed any insider buying for a very long time neither. In comparison, insiders of Broadcom the biggest position in my portfolio, own 27% of the shares of Broadcom. By the way, can you guess my top 2 other positions in my portfolio? I'll make a video about it if I could get 100 likes in this video. Let's throw the challenge. Getting back to the topic, the third stock I would not recommend to buy is Global Net Lease. Global Net Lease Incorporated is a real estate investment trust that focuses on owning and managing a diversified portfolio of commercial properties leased to tenants worldwide. It's traded on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol GNL. Global Net Lease primarily invests in single tenant, net leased commercial properties. In a net lease arrangement, the tenant typically pays not only rent but also some or all of the property expenses such as taxes insurance, and maintenance costs. 
single tenant properties mean that each property is leased to only one tenant, which can range from retail stores to office buildings to industrial facilities. Dividend yield, 16.11%. Dividend safety, 16. Like the other two stocks I presented, the dividend growth is a negative 6% per year in the last five years and the company hasn't grown its dividend yet. The return on equity rate is not the worst I've seen. In 2023 it was a negative 10% but before in the previous years it was positive except 2014. With a payout ratio of 103%, a net debt to capital of 66%, I can't say putting money in global net lease is an investment but rather a gambling. This is it. Remember, I am not a financial advisor. Don't forget to make your own due diligence before investing. I hope the list helps add some companies to your watch list and maybe portfolio. Please push the like button if you like the video and subscribe to the channel for similar content. I'll see you next time.